Wonder Part 8. This part is written from August's perspective again. You're going to reach the sky. Fly. Beautiful child. Rhythmics. Beautiful child. Pages 249 to 258. The 5th grade nature retreat. Every year in the spring, the 5th graders of Beecher Prep go away for three days and two nights to a place called Broadwood Nature Reserve in Pennsylvania. It's a four hour bus drive away. The kids sleep in cabins with bunk beds. There are campfires and s'mores and long walks through the woods. The teachers have been prepping us about this all year long. So all the kids in the grade are excited about it, except for me. It's not even that I'm not excited, because I kind of am. It's just that I've never slept away from home before and I'm kind of nervous. Most kids have had sleepovers by the time they're my age. A lot of kids have gone to sleepaway camps or stayed with their grandparents or whatever. Not me. Not unless you include hospital stays. But even then mum and dad always stayed with me overnight. But I never slept over at Tata and Papa's house. Or Aunt Kate and Uncle Poe's house. When I was real little that was mainly because there were too many medical issues. Like my track tube needed to be clear, needing to be cleared out every hour. Or reinserting my feeding tube if it got detached. But when I got bigger I just never felt like sleeping anywhere else. There was one time when I half slept over at Christopher's house. We were about eight and we were still best friends. Our family had gone for a visit to his house and me and Christopher were having such a great time playing Lego Star Wars that we didn't want to leave that I didn't want to leave when it was time to go. We were like, please, 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 can we have a sleepover? So our parents said yes, and Mum and Dad and Vaya drove home, and me and Christopher stayed up till midnight, playing until Lisa, his mum said, Okay guys, time to go to bed. Well that's when I kind of panicked a bit. Lisa tried to help me go to sleep, but I just started crying and saying that I wanted to go home. So at 1am, Lisa called mum and dad, and dad drove all the way back out to Bridgeport to pick me up. We didn't get home until 3am, so my one and only sleepover up until now was pretty much, a, pretty much a disaster, which is why I'm a little nervous about the nature retreat. On the other hand, I'm really excited. Gnome 4. I asked mum to buy me a new rolling duffel bag, because my old one has Star Wars stuff on it. And there's no way I was going to take that to a fifth grade nature retreat. As much as I love Star Wars, I don't want to be I don't want that to be what I'm known for. Everyone's known for something in middle school. Like Reed is known for being really into marine life and the oceans and things like that. And Amos is known for being a really good baseball player. And Charlotte is known for having been in a TV commercial when she was six. And Zymeen is known for being really smart. My point is in that middle is that in middle school you get known for what you're into. And you have to be careful about stuff like that. Like Max G and Max W will never live down their Dungeons and Dragons obsession. So I was actually trying to ease out of the whole Star Wars thing a bit. I mean, it'll always be special to me, like it is with the Doctor who put in my hearing aids. It's just not the thing I want to be known for in middle school. I'm not sure what I want to be known for, but it's not that. That's not exactly true. I do know what I really want. I want what I, I'm really known for. But there's nothing I can do about that. A Star Wars duffel bag, I could do something about Packing. Mum helped me pack the night before the big trip. We put all the clothes I was taking on my bed and she folded everything neatly and put it inside the bag while I watched. It was a plain blue rolling duffel by the way. No logos or at work. What if I can't sleep at night? I asked. Take a book with you and if you can't sleep you can pull, up your fla pull out your flashlight and read for a bit until you get sleepy. She answered. I nodded. What if I have a nightmare? Your teachers will be there sweetie, she said. And Jack and your friends. I can bring Babu, I said. That was my favourite stuffed animal when I was little. A small black bear with a soft black nose. You don't really sleep with him anymore, do you? said Mum. No, but I keep him in my closet in case I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't get back to sleep, I said. I could hide him in my bag. No one would know. Then let's do that, Mum nodded, getting Babu from inside my closet. I wish they allowed cell phones, I said. I know, me too, she said. Though I know you're going to have a great time, Oggy. You sure you want me to pat Babu? Yeah, but way down where no where no one can see him, I said. She stuck Babu deep inside my bag and then stuffed the last of my t-shirts on top of him. So many clothes for just two days. Three days and two nights, I corrected her. Yep, she nodded smiling. Three days and two nights. She zipped up the duffel bag and picked it up. Not too heavy. Try it. I picked up the bag. Fine, I shrugged. She sat on the bed. Hey, what happened to your Empire Strikes Back poster? Oh, I took that down ages ago, I answered. She shook her head. Huh? I didn't notice that before. I'm trying to, you know, change my image a bit, I explained. Okay, she smiled, nodding like she understood. Anyway, honey, you have to promise me you won't forget to put on the bug spray, okay? On the legs, especially when you're hiking through the woods. It's right here in the front compartment. Uh-huh. I'm putting your sunscreen, she said. 
you do not want to get sunburn and I don't I repeat and don't I repeat do not forget to take your hearing aids off if you go swimming would I get electrocuted no but you'd be in real hot water with, dad, with daddy because those things cost a fortune she laughed and I put the rain poncho in the front compartment too same thing goes if it rains oggy okay make sure you cover your hearing aids with the hood aye aye sir I said to salute him she smiled and pulled me over I can't believe how much she'd grown up this year, Oggy, she said softly, putting her hands to, on the sides of my face. Do I look taller? Definitely, she nodded. I'm still the shortest one in my grade. I'm not really even talking about your height, she said. Suppose I hate it there. You can have a great time, Oggy. I nodded. She got up and gave me a quick kiss on the forehead. OK, so I say we get to bed now. It's only nine o'clock, Mum. Your bus leaves at 6am tomorrow. You don't want to be late. Come on, chop chop. Your teeth are brushed. I nodded and climbed into bed. She started to lie down next to me. You don't need to put me to bed tonight, Mum, I said. I'll read on my own till I get sleepy. Really? She nodded, impressed. She squeezed my hand and gave it a kiss. Okay, then. Good night, love. Have sweet dreams. You too. She turned on the little reading light beside the bed. I'll write you letters, I said as she was leaving, even though I'll probably be home before you guys even get them. Then we can read them together, she said, and threw me a kiss. When she left my room, I took my copy of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe off the night table and started reading until I fell asleep. Though the witch knew the deep magic, there is magic deeper which she still did not know. Her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. But if she could have looked a little bit further back, into the stillness and the darkness before time dawned, she would have read there a different incantation. Daybreak. The next day I woke up really early. It was still dark inside my room and even darker outside, though I knew it would be morning soon. I turned over on my side but I didn't feel all sleep feel at all sleepy. That's when I saw Daisy sitting near my bed. I mean, I knew it wasn't Daisy, but for a second I saw a shadow looking that looked just like her. I didn't think it was a dream then, but now looking back, I know it must have been. It didn't make me sad to see her at all, it just filled me up with nice feelings inside. She was gone after a second and I couldn't see her again in the darkness. The room slowly started lightening. I reached the hearing aid headband and put it on, and now the world was really awake. I could hear the garbage trucks clunking down the street, and the birds in our backyard. And down the hallway I heard Mum's alarm beeping. Daisy's ghost made me feel super strong inside, knowing wherever I am, she'd be there with me. I got up out of bed and went to my desk and wrote a little note to Mum. Then I went into the living room where my pack bag was by the door. I opened it up and fished inside until I found what I was looking for. I took Babu back to my room and laid him in my bed and taped a little note to Mum on his chest and then I covered him with a blanket so Mum would find him later. The note read, Dear Mum, I won't need Babu, but if you miss me, you can cuddle with him yourself. Oggy. Dear one, The bus ride went really fast. I sat by the window and Jack was right next to me in the aisle seat. Summer and Maya were in front of us. Everyone was in a good mood, kind of loud, laughing a lot. I noticed right away that Julian wasn't on our bus, even though Henry and Miles were. I figured he must be under the bus, but then I overheard Miles tell Amos that Julian ditched the grade trip because he thought the whole nature retreat thing was quite, was quote unquote, dorky. I got totally pumped because dealing with Julian for three days in a row, two nights, was a major reason I was nervous about this whole trip. So now without him there, I could just relax and not worry about anything. We got to the nature reserve at around noon. The first thing we did was put our stuff down in the cabins. There were three bunk beds to every room, and so me and Jack did rock, paper, scissors for the top bunk, and I won. Woohoo! And the other guys in the room were Reed and Tristan, and Pablo and Nino. After we had lunch in the main cabin, we all went on a two hour guided nature hike through the woods. But these were not woods like the kind we have in Central Park, these were real woods. Giant trees which are, that almost totally blocked out the sunlight, tangles of leaves and fallen trunks, howls and chirps, and really loud bird calls. There was a slight fog too like a pale blue smoke all around us. So cool. The nature guide pointed everything out to us. The different types of trees we were passing, the insects inside the deadlocks on the trail, the signs of deer and bears in the woods, what types of birds were whistling and where to look for them. I realised that my lowbot hearing aids actually made me hear better than most people because I was usually the first person to hear a new bird call. It started to rain as we headed back to camp. I pulled on my rain poncho and pulled the hood up so my hearing aids wouldn't get wet but my jeans and shoes got soaked by the time we reached our cabins. Everyone got soaked. It was fun though. We had a wet sock fight in the cabin. Since it rained for the rest of the day, we spent most of the afternoon goofing off in the rec room. 
they had ping pong a ping pong table and an all style arcade games like Pac Man and Missile Command that we played until dinner time. Luckily by then it had stopped raining, so we had we got to have a real campfire cookout. The log benches around the campfire were still a little damp, but we threw our jackets over them and hung them by the fire, toasting s'mores and eating the best roasted hot dogs I've ever, ever tasted. Mum was right about the mosquitoes, there were tons of them, but luckily I'd spritzed myself before I left the cabin, and I wasn't eating the live like some of the other kids were. I loved hanging out by the campfire after dark. I loved the way bits of fire dust would float up and disappear into the night air, and how the, la- how the fire lit up people's faces. I loved the sound that the fire made too, and how the woods were so dark that you couldn't see anything around you, and you'd look up and see a billion stars in the sky. The sky doesn't look like that in North River Heights. I've seen it look like that in Montauk though, like someone sprinkled salt on a shiny black table. I was so tired when I got back to the cabin that I didn't need to pull out a book to read. I fell asleep almost as fast as my head hit the pillow, and maybe I dreamed about the stars. I don't know.